Hey guys, it's James here, and if you're interested in learning how to play a killer rock feel on the bass guitar and learning how to master alternate fingering, make sure you check this lesson out all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar and today I want to show you how to create a really consistent killer rock bass guitar feel. Now the secret behind doing this is an idea called pumping eights and pumping eights sound just like this. And they have this really pumping forward sort of propulsion type feel to them. And also the eight of them per bar, because the pulse is this, and we are going one and two and three and four and. And one of the challenges students often have here is getting the speed. And that's because they need alternate fingering, which is where you're going one, two, one, two, one, two. And the challenge I often see is that they haven't got their alternate fingering together. So I want to show you a really killer exercise to do that. But first off, there is a free cheat sheet which comes with this lesson, which is called Five Steps to Faster Fingers. And you can download that from the description below. Also, the inspiration for this lesson came from, we've been filming the 30 day killer rock bass action plan, where in the second of the six day master plans where we go through technique development, groove development, baseline builders, is has this idea called pumping eights in there. And I'm teaching that in that particular course. And it made me think, let's make a quick video about this so I can show you how this works, the particular technique that you need to play this feel or how to develop that technique. That's more to the point. But if you want to check out the 30 day killer rock bass action plan, again, there is a link below. So to play alternate fingering well, we need to be able to go one, two, one, two, one, two, like this. And often what happens with students is they will only just, they, it's normally one of two things, they just use one finger. And the reality of just using one finger is that you're going to max out. And that is the problem, there's only so fast, unless you're the great James Jameson uh, from Motown Records who had the ridiculous one finger technique. But most of us mere mortals will need two fingers to do it. So we need to develop that. Or the other problem that I see is that students will be using two fingers, but there'll be no consistency to it. So be, maybe go one, two, and then be one, one, and then maybe two, two, and then maybe the odd third finger in there. But there has to be this real consistency to make it to work. And what I want you to imagine walking along the road. The reason we walk along the road like this is that we're always going one, two, one, two. There's a real rhythm that we learn to that when we are one or two years old. I'm watching my son learn to do that at the moment and it's really quite profound. And that's something that we need to do as bass players. And I want to show you how to do that right now, a really great technique to do it. Because this is purely mechanical. And what happens until we've learned these mechanics, it's often really hard to put it together. And you're always going to be kind of tripping up over yourself. If you've ever seen the Monty Python Ministry of Silly Walks, you can often see that where they're doing these ridiculous walks and falling over and all that kind of thing. It's the same thing. So what we always have to do is gain that consistency in the mechanics of how we play. And when we get those mechanics right, that's when it goes into our subconscious and we no longer have to think about it. So what I wanna do is grab a metronome. So what I'm gonna show you is really quite simple today. And I'm gonna put the metronome on at 80 beats per minute. So I've got it already preset here, like this. I'm gonna put it on my knee, hope it doesn't fall off. And I want you to just play the first finger with the click like this. And then in the gaps, this is where I want you to put your second finger. Like this. And then there's this really hypnotic effect when everything starts to line up and really almost kind of groove with the metronome. But the thing that you will notice is that the one is always on the beep. And that is the thing that will give you the consistency. Because if you suddenly notice yourself 
getting out. That is because you've double fingered or something like that. Something with the mechanics has gone wrong. So you can really slow this right down like so. I'm going to take it down to say 60 BPM like this. My first is always lining up. Like this. You may want to use two different sound beeps. So you might want a high beep or a low beep. It doesn't really matter. But the important thing is you've always got a point to anchor, which you know is one particular finger. You can turn it inside out as well. You could lead on the second finger. So you always know that your second finger is on the bead. Like that. It feels a bit weird to me because I always tend to lead with my first. But there have been points where I really, really academically had to think about this. I'll have a piece of music and I'm literally writing one, two, one, two of my right hand finger. Because often we forget our right hand and we're concentrating on all this because this often seems much more complex. But if we haven't got this, the engine together, it can start to get really, really quite... Um, everything can just start falling apart. You can literally be tripping up as you're walking along. So we can take this a step further. So if we take a, a traditional left hand technique, like the one finger per fret technique like this, we can practice that over it. So let me put out this. And what you'll notice is that my first and my third finger on my left hand here are always lining up with the beep. And then my first finger on this hand is always lining up with the beep. So nothing is happening by accident. So really, really slow it down. Or we can then just slowly start speeding it up once you get the mechanics together. Practice maybe a bar at a time. It doesn't matter. Just start getting it and slowly ramping things up. So what I want to do is let's take this up to but back, let's take this to 90 BPM and you can see what this sounds like. Really nice. And then we can go even further. Let me take it up. I'm going to take it up to 120 now. So you can start to see really put some fit speed into this. Let me get to nearly there. There we go. 120 BPM. So guys, the important thing with this is to always start thinking about the mechanics of how you play. Being able to play fast doesn't happen by accident, but it's something that absolutely everyone can work on and slowly build up. It's something I had to do to really start getting sort of next level speed into my playing. But what I want to do is show you this stuff now in the real world. We're going to take one of the tracks from the 30 Day Killer Rock Bass Action Plan, and this is the pumping eights feel, which you really need alternate fingering to get together. And that's what we're developing. It's alternate fingering here fundamentally. And once you get comfortable with it, you don't even think about it. What I'm thinking about when I play now is how can I be creative? What interesting bass lines can I add? Because the mechanics are, into, are in my subconscious. So anyway, let's play it with the track now so you can hear what this sounds like. One, two, three, four.
So that's the end of this lesson. Please don't forget there is a free PDF checklist that comes with this lesson. Just click in the description below and you can grab that there. Also, don't forget to check out the 30 day killer rock bass action plan if you're interested in playing some fantastic killer rock bass over the next 30 days. And also, please give it a like and share on social. I've been James from eBay's Guitar and I will catch you next time. Cheers for now.